My name is Eileen Bouvier. I'm a costume designer, so I always really like the old historical items. Um, this is an exhibit of largely vintage and antique sewing items, trim, notions, tools. I do have a few modern reproductions. Yeah, I actually tried to get a range almost of the entire 20th century. The oldest one here, I don't believe I was able to find a date on it, but it's based on the designer and the clothing style. It's probably from the 19-teens. These two are from the 1920s, and it goes 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and the last one is from the 1980s. Some of them I've purchased myself for my own use. Uh, some I've collected over the years. The pattern companies themselves are starting to reissue a lot of their vintage patterns. Um, so this is one, it's a 1930s original pattern uh, but that they reissued just a couple years ago. And as a costume designer, that's the kind of thing I love because um, it's new so I can use it and it's not fragile, but I can get that vintage look for a show. Um, I do mostly work with the Vokes Theater in Wayland. Um, I also recently did a show for the Acme Theater in Maynard. Um, but I've been with Vokes a long time. Um, a lot of times with community theater you find one place that's kind of your, your theater home. Uh, and Vokes has been that for me for a long time. I, the most recent one was called Silent Sky. Um, that was a sort of early 20th century setting. Um, I've done musicals, and my the upcoming show is The Tempest, so William Shakespeare. It's probably this belt buckle here. Um, let's see if I can... Yeah, it's... That one is most likely late 19th century. Um, a lot of things I don't have an exact date for because, you know, they made them over a long range of time. Um, styles come in and out of fashion, so unless it has a date actually on it, it can be difficult. But um, just based on what I know about what I have, that would be the oldest piece. Um, it's all handmade. It's actually the pineapple stitch, which is you know this oval that kind of looks like a pineapple, was pretty common for crochet patterns. Um, you see a lot of them. I, this would have taken quite a while to make because <laughs> um, it's quite a large piece. I don't know what it was made for specifically, but I have my grandmother's lay in the cedar chest and this fits perfectly on top of it so it might have been for that uh, but I love it because it's just a beautiful piece of work well it seems to skip generations um, I know my great-grandmother did a lot of it um, that white and purple trim over there is also something she made and my mother did sew some when I was younger um, she made a lot of my clothes and things but she hasn't done anything crafty really in a long time um, so it, but it seemed to pass on to me <laughs> I think one of the things I really love about it is it's you never stop learning about it there's so much to know about sewing there's so many different ways to make a garment um, and the history of it is so rich with you know different tools and different trends and ways that people have found to help themselves make things um, really interests me. And, and also because um, very often sewing was a way for women to be independent. And uh, especially in the 19th, like the late, late 19th and early 20th century, you see a lot of um, books and magazines and things that were marketed to women with patterns and items, um, specifically with the idea that a woman who could sew or crochet or knit um, could make herself a little money. Um, and, you know, and that way, 
help her family or have a little independent spending money of her own. I do. I, I do several different needlework styles. Um, you know, I can crochet and knit. Um, I do some embroidery, and cross stitch. But I really do like the sewing the best, I think. Collector time is made possible with generous donations by Central Mass Metal Detectors, rediscovering the past to preserve for the future. Find us on Facebook. And Tangway Jewelers, 19 Connor Street in Gardner, serving the area since 1976. Thank you.